This month, we have a very special guest with us in the studio, Terence Tsai, an investment equity analyst at Fidelity, based in Hong Kong. Welcome to Singapore, Terence. Thanks for having me. So Terence is our first guest and hopefully the first of many to come. So April was really a rough month for markets. Uh, inflation continued to remain quite sticky. Um, Q1 GDP data in the US also underwhelmed. Uh, April non-farm payrolls also came in under expectations. And that really caused a reshuffle, a rearrangement of uh, investors' expectations of rate cuts uh, for the rest of 2024. So Terence, uh, any thoughts on how the earnings season unfolded? The earnings season was better than expected. Uh, most companies outperformed uh, expectations on the upside. And that really goes to a continuation on the strength of, of the U.S. consumer. Investors also start to look through near-term earnings weakness, even if they missed, uh, and look for guidance and outlook from the companies. And while it's a good sign that earnings have been better than feared, it's important for earnings uh, momentum to continue because of where valuations are uh, currently uh, so that we can justify current valuations. So at Fidelity, our base case for the rest of 2024 is for continued economic growth. But we do think volatility will remain as the timing of uh, monetary policy remains uncertain and geopolitical risks can potentially impact inflation. Hey Chris, so how are regional clients feeling? Any jitters given the rough April you mentioned? Well, actually, optimism remains high, right? Uh, the preference for equity remains high as well, especially for the US, Japan, and for technology stocks. So investors are also starting to pay attention to Chinese equities, given the strong run they've had since the Chinese New Year back in February. So this is substantiated by recent easing measures. So for example, the Chinese authorities released a nine-point guideline aimed at building a fair and efficient capital market, and really that's to draw foreign investors back to the market. So in fixed income, high-quality investment-grade bonds remains quite a consensus trade as investors look to lock in elevated yields that still stand at close to 17-year highs. So Terence, every quarter we identify several investment themes, right, based on key opportunities in the market. So one of the themes we're having for Q2 is um, a differentiated approach to a super trend, where in technology, we look beyond the obvious winners. So some might say uh, semiconductor stocks are one of the more obvious winners. So Terence, is it time for investors to be semi-cautious? We are in the 19th month of a semiconductor share price rally. Uh, so yes, I do think we should be semi-conscious. It's no longer the right strategy to buy everything, but to be more selective. There are still two major walls of worries that investors have to grapple with. The first is that this recovery has been driven almost entirely by pricing. The volumes have not recovered, and it's been a very narrow recovery driven by artificial intelligence demand. The second worry that investors have to deal with is that there has been a lot of capacity expansion. Now, the two mitigating factors that investors are hopeful for is the first that the pricing recovery will broaden out to a volume recovery and that most of the cap capex is contained in China. And we're hoping that is contained for localization efforts and doesn't impact the global supply chain. So Terence, you mentioned artificial intelligence uh, is driving growth and kind of optimism as well. So is this the start of a stage of a new explosive growth? Uh, and are there any potential uh, beneficiaries beyond the obvious? I think we're in the early innings uh, of a growth stage for artificial intelligence. However, there's going to be cycles along the way. I think what's interesting beyond the obvious winners like semiconductors, which we have just talked about, also include companies that are early adopters of artificial intelligence. Companies that are able to use AI to lower their costs and improve efficiency will be the early winners of artificial intelligence as we have seen in the internet and mobile era. Beyond that, data centers are an extremely important infrastructure to enable artificial intelligence. And a lot of infrastructure companies will benefit from the growing demand as nations and companies look to build out uh, their artificial intelligence data centers. 
So Terence, it was really fantastic having you with us here today. Thank you very much and hope to speak to you again soon. Thanks for having me. Thank <laughs> you.